my name's Mike Williams. I'm also one of the Capital Recovery Coaches, and I am currently in long-term recovery. Wow. And so everyone's speaking through their mask, so I might as well put my mask on and so that I can speak through my mask. And so what we do today here at Capital Recovery Center, we like to start off with uh, a little house cleaning rules before we get into the uh, virtual meeting. And one of the things is uh, we introduce ourselves and we already done that. And so welcome to this all recovery meeting. And once again, I told you my name is Craig. An all recovery meeting welcomes all who struggles with addiction, are affected by addiction, and or support the recovery lifestyle. An all recovery meeting is non-denominational, meaning all pathways of recovery are embraced here. Today, I will choose a universal recovery topic, and then we will discuss it. Specifically, an all recovery meeting is not affiliated with any anonymous program, although we are likely to hear comments associated with 12-step fellowships. Coming from a place of mutual respect and understanding, let's observe some basic meeting agreements. Number one, please respect the opinions and remarks of others. Number two, please no cross-talking, only one person speak at a time. Number three, please turn your cell phones off or place them on vibrate. And so I already turned my phone on, the volume down, not off. And so, number four, please refrain from the overuse of profanity in order not to offend others. And so we welcome all those in the community. If you want to join, we just ask that you adhere, adhere to those four um, points that I just read. All right? Are there any announcements? Uh, just tune in on Tuesday for uh, uh, coffee and conversation every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Um, we do a, 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 basically it's an open discussion as well, but you can get your coffee every Tuesday 10 a.m. with coffee and conversation here at Capital Recovery Center. All right. Is there any other announcement that we may have? Uh, so. We're going to be discussing, we're going to, to tell you a little bit more about Capital Recovery Center uh, and what we do here and some of the services that we provide. And uh, we also have our Recovery on Wheels. We have our Knock and Talk. And we'll get into that later on in the show. Let's begin by, uh, we already said that, introducing ourselves completely. All right. So let's have a moment of silence to remember why we are here. All right, thank you. This is a topic discussion meeting, and the topic I have chosen is, not I, but we, we have chosen the Matrix Model B, Relapse Prevention Group Handout. Nice, nice. And we, this is, uh, it says here, a 16-week individualized program, intensive outpatient program. Let's, let's be straight here. We're not a uh, treatment facility, right, Mike? Not therapeutic treatment facility. At all. And we are a recovery support center. And that, what that entails, we are here to support you and help break down some of the barriers that you may meet or the challenges that you may face uh, in your recovery or sobriety process. We just the coaches. Is if you think about it, um, the easiest way to... Um, Someone asked me, well, what do you do? And I said, the easiest way to explain it is we are the coaches. We write up the plays. You execute the play. You go into the game and play. We draw up the play for you. What type of relapse prevention skills that you think or we think you need by discussing or talking to you. And then you execute the play that we come up with to in hopes of having a long-term or successful recovery life. That's right. And so as the... As be, before we begin, you may share on this topic or not, or on something else that relates to recovery. Please be mindful of the amount of people in the room and our time frame when sharing. All right, we got that all clear and out of the way, and so we can begin. Uh, I believe we're on lesson one. Yes, handout one. So, uh, <clears throat> would anyone like to start off, and we'll, we'll begin. All right, so the first lesson is alcohol, the legal drug. It is 
is often difficult for patients to stop drinking when they enter treatment. Some of the reasons for this include the following. Triggers for alcohol use are everywhere. It is sometimes hard to do anything social without facing people who are drinking. Do you have friends who get together without drinking? If so, write their names. Triggers, um, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, Mike. Triggers for alcohol use is everywhere. What that simply means, if you have an alcohol, you can actually use it in anything, but specifically alcohol. What it says, triggered to use alcohol is everywhere. If you notice, you can go to a restaurant and see alcohol. So if you if one of your triggers is seeing it, then you're gonna have to develop the necessary coping skills to be to realize this fact that everywhere you go, you're gonna see triggers to use alcohol. You go to any restaurant, you can sit over here and get something to eat, and there's a bar right there. So unless you're gonna actually avoid all those places. It's better to try, but well, you can start out that way, but eventually you're going to have to develop some type of um, coping skills to be able to deal with these environments that have alcohol that's there, and even though it's not really for you. Right. And if you feel it, a lot of times we have to listen to a lot of cues, and cues is that if we're feeling our emotion is taking a left turn, Whereas we're having a discussion and that it may uh, stir up some emotion or mm -hmm. may make us sad. Those are some of the cues that some people may face where it may be anxiety or, or sadness to the fact that that can stir up a trigger that someone may want to take a drink uh, just to feel that they need the, that's a way of coping. But we yeah. say that that's not a coping tool that we want. Uh, to. We want to try to teach you, or uh, I've learned that a lot of the tools that I have used in my own life, I had them, I just didn't know how to use them. So what my mentor, sponsor, recovery uh, coach did was tell me about me having them and then told me, no, listen, when you're faced with this situation, use the coping skills. So you got to understand that um, using the alcohol when you feel triggered to use will only satisfy you for up until a particular time. But whatever it caused you to do it then probably remains after the fact. <laughs> yeah. So it really doesn't uh, make like problems go away. But you, you can understand that most of the triggers that you have for the use of alcohol is always a coping skill that you can use to counteract the trigger. Yes, always. And so be mindful of those things and so we're going to, I believe, move on to number two. Number two. Well, number two says, it goes on to what you were saying, Craig. It says, many people use alcohol in response to internal triggers. Mm. Depression and anxiety seem to go away when people have a drink. It's difficult for them to realize that sometimes the alcohol causes the depression. <laughs> It's difficult to realize that sometimes the alcohol, that is a depressing thing. That's one of the um, side effects of uh, when you drink alcohol, you start to get down. It, yeah. it, it's, it's something that um, causes you to have some depressing thinking. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of guys, I, I actually had the chance to do some uh, assessment, and they felt that they was having mental illness because they were feeling depressed. But when they got evaluated, they only became depressed when they didn't have the alcohol in their system. Yeah. And so we don't we we encourage you to uh, when you're feeling depressed, uh, like Mike said, he he sought out his mentor. Mm -hmm. His mentor, you know, encouraged him to use the tools that he was given, you know, a sponsor or a recovery coach. A recovery coach, <laughs> like us. And so you can reach us here yeah. at Capital Recovery Center. Yeah, you can always, if you need a recovery coach, you can call Capital Recovery Center at 856-391-7449. I'm back, David. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so you can always call us because you need, everybody needs help. But one of the things I like in uh, number two, where it says, Many people use alcohol or any drug, but we're specifically talking about alcohol in this uh, conversation. 
Many people use alcohol in response to internal triggers. That means that whatever is triggering you is something that's coming from within you. And when you have internal triggers, it's simply changing your mindset, finding things to change your mindset. Um, I have a thing in my office or on my refrigerator at home, and it says, I think myself happy. And what that simply means, no matter how chaotic my situation might be going in my life, I think myself happy. Uh, no matter if I'm going through a sickness, I think myself happy. And what that means is I think about things that will bring me joy instead of things that will make me depressed. Internal triggers can be counteracted by thinking happy things that you want to think about your life. Think about good times you have shared. And it's not saying that what you're faced with is not real. Yes. It's just saying your mind, you control what you think about your mind. So your internal triggers have to be, you have to go against your internal triggers with things to counteract. If you're thinking negative, think about things positive instead of just succumbing to the negative thoughts. Those internal triggers are powerful. And that is so true, Mike, because we were talking about cues earlier and you say internal. So whenever you face with those internal cues, yeah. you know, if you feel yourself getting depressed or feeling sad, pause for a minute. You know, if you're in a, a heated situation where you feel that uh, your emotion or your anger is elevating, go outside. You know, use different strategies and di different methods to bring your uh, ease to those internal cues. You know, Mike talked about the uh, the mental aspect yeah. of the internal uh, cues. Uh, now I'm telling you about the physical aspect or an emotional aspect of internal cues that you can utilize different strategies to uh, overcome. Yeah, it's always different things that you can use. These things are available to us all. Our generation um, have basically, like, no excuses. Because we can basically, we was just looking up, or trying to, we was trying to look up a word, and everybody was searching, like, but you see what we have in our arts. Man, I don't know, what, before we had to go to the library, yeah. get a book, encyclopedia. we had to do all that. But now our generation has so much available to us that when we're thinking these negative thoughts and we're going through these things and we're facing triggers, that's when we got to reach out to recovery coaches, reach out to get into some type of program, reach out to your spiritual advisors, whatever it may be. Do all those things before you pick up the aqua. <laughs> yeah. Before you do that, call everybody you can. Even if they don't pick up, you can always call. Keep calling and trying to get somebody to help you. So hopefully we are giving you some good information, yeah. some good insight. And so don't be ashamed to uh, reach out for help. Mike gave you the number. I'm going to give you the address. Uh, we're only accepting people through appointments only. We're located at 72 North Pearl Street here in Bristol, New Jersey, 08302. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I, mean, I, was, I had to look around, make sure I had it right. Hey, it was tough, but <laughs> hey, he found it. He found it. <laughs> oh man, oh, that's man. how you, you can have fun, man. Yeah, that's right. So. All right. So on to number three. It says if a person is addicted to an illicit, illicit. drug and uses alcohol less often, alcohol may not be viewed as a problem. The problem isn't recognized until the person tries to stop drinking. And the reason why that's so, because alcohol might not be the problem. That would be something that, me personally, let me use me. I only drunk alcohol when I was broke. When I, I really used to like doing heroin and, and crack cocaine. But I needed money to get that. If you see me drinking alcohol, then it's like, he ain't got no money. So alcohol wasn't my problem. The other things that I was doing were my problem. So the, what this is saying is letting us know that the alcohol probably is not recognized as the problem, but the other drugs is. It's just something that they added on to it. Yeah. And, and uh, one of the things that I, I noticed when I was in uh, recovery, going through the process, just in case you guys didn't know, I'm in recovery as well. And uh, they often used to tell us, you know, sometimes people... Uh, alternate or switch one addiction for another. Mm -hmm. That's true. And so, be mindful, you know, it don't have to be illicit drugs, it don't have to be alcohol. 
It could be other things. Oh, it could be gambling. It could be a lot of people be addicted to uh, adrenaline. Yeah. You see people riding and speeding down the highway. You know, these people are adrenaline, you know, addicted to it. Yeah, you know, the fast life. And so that's their high. That's their high. You yeah. know what I mean? So So one of the things it says the problem isn't recognized until the person trying to stop. That's the same with everything, not just alcohol or anything. You don't really know a problem until you try to stop. You will hear people say no, no, I don't have a problem. I just don't want to stop. No, you can't stop. Like, I, no, you, you, you just use the, the excuse, I don't want to. Yeah. But once a person tries to stop doing something, that's when they say, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. I can't stop doing this on my own. Yeah. And that's okay. You can reach out to us again. We also connect people, even though we are not a treatment facility, we connect people to detox, to outpatient, inpatient, even if you need all those things or one of your family members need it, just contact us and let us know and we can make the connection to the treatment facilities that that's um needed that that's oh. number four. Number four. Alcohol affects the rational thinking part of the brain. It is hard to think re reasonably about a drug that makes thinking clearly more difficult. Mm -hmm. The rational thinking part of the brain. The alcohol the alcohol affects the rational thinking part of the brain and that's why you hear this statement. I drive better when I'm drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know why people think that? Because alcohol messes with the rational part of an individual brain. Yeah. Man, I drive better when I drunk. You was on the side it, 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 it messed it them up. The alcohol messed up the rational part like I'm, I'm drunk, I shouldn't get in this car, I shouldn't call an Uber, call a cab, call a friend, call a family member to come get me. Yeah. That None of that gets uh, processed because their brain, the alcohol messed up the rational thinking. Yeah, and for for alcohol, you know, a lot of people, it starts out with a lot of people at a younger age. And for me, myself, uh, I saw, tried alcohol when I was really young and I thought I needed that to... Uh, have a nice conversation yeah. with, you know, female. I thought I needed it. You thought I thought I needed it. I thought, it, you know, once I took that drink, I thought that built up my confidence. Yeah. <laughs> but as I got older and more experienced, I realized yeah, that true. I didn't need, I don't need alcohol just to uh, have a decent conversation or to be, uh, to approach someone on a rational yeah. level. Because you think you need that stuff once you, um, and especially if you did it for a long period of time and you, you used alcohol for a long period of time. And when you, that is one of the uh, things that a lot of people will face when you get off alcohol and you live in a, sobri a life of sobriety. You start to think that's one of the traps that the disease will try to get you. Like, well, you won't be able to talk to them no more because you don't drink. So, you know, you start, you start having these type of conversations. You're like, you know, and then you start, then the sad part is you start having a conversation back. Like, yeah, you're right. You know, <laughs> you start having all these, this is, this is the second guessing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you got to understand, you know, it's all right, though. Alcohol affects the rational thinking part of the brain. And I can speak personally. I thought um, I, uh, some of the things that I, how I would think would not come back. But over a period of time, actually, the brain started repairing itself. It started coming, like my thinking and everything started clearing up and getting better. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think it, I can't speak because I am an expert or medical field, but I can't speak of how bad you have to have hurt your brain due to alcohol before some things die and won't come back. I don't know. That's something, you know, an expert in the medical field would have to do. I ain't sure. So you're saying you're not going to test that? Nah. Oh, well, all right, well, that's I cool. stick in my lane, man. I, I, I ain't, ain't going to do that, man. They might sue me. Then I'm going to have to say, Karen told me. I got to go through this whole part of the mill. Karen, like, no, Craig told me. Oh, ah. my God. But, you know, let's move. All right, we're on number five, all right? Yeah. So, so it says, because alcohol dulls the rational brain, it promotes less controlled activity in the lower brain. This results in alcohol helping people become more sexual, less self-conscious, and more social. When you are used to using alcohol to increase sexual pleasure and help you socialize, these activities feel uncomfortable without it. Wow. Wow. And I was just talking about that, you know. Uh, as a young you person, 
you know, just out of, you know, it's just, I thought, you know, it just built up my, my level of, of attraction. Yeah. And, and that's the distorted aspect of being under the influence of alcohol or any mind altering substance. You know, we are, we as uh, those who use uh, alcohol or substance use disorders or illicit drugs, we oftentimes have a distorted uh, viewpoint of reality yeah. because it alters our brain. And so we advise and we encourage a lot of people out there to uh, don't allow that because, let's be real, a lot of other things, what they call side effects or a lot of things, you know, you can catch diseases if you're not careful about the things of the drugs or the drinking that you're using because you're not in your right state of mind. Yeah. And so when it comes to being uh, conscious of your uh, environment or your behavior, you know, alcohol can just distort it. Distort it. It is distorted anyway, but you got to remember um, the, uh, in order for you to get past that part, you should always uh, look for different ways to do things. If you're used to, so used to doing it, and you were high, you can actually pick up new ho hobbies and new things that you do um, while you're so I ain't saying abandon shit on all the things that you used to do, because even um, we was just laughing at um, my wife and I and the family members were laughing, because I remember when I was actually high one time and I was going to play a basketball game, I went in the bathroom and I used some cocaine suicidal attempt here. Went in the bathroom and I used cocaine and a joke in my family is they remember when I came out the bathroom talking about, I feel marvelous. And I was going on the basketball court and they was like, this guy is crazy about to die. Right? But it's crazy because I'm saying that because that's something that I used to like to do. I like to play basketball. But even though I'm not actually using it, I still play basketball. I might don't play and run like I did when I was younger. But I'm saying, I thought I couldn't play unless I was high. You know what I'm saying? But it was something that I liked. That's why I was talking about picking up new hobbies. But I thought I couldn't do it unless I had some type of drug in my body. Yeah. But I still like to play basketball now, but I don't have the drugs in my body. Yeah. So you might used to do stuff when you were on alcohol, and that um, we understand that. But what we're trying to say is some of them things you might have to let go, but not necessarily all of them have to go. Like I just used the example about basketball. <laughs> and if I may add, uh, because for the older people who may remember Lynn Byers, because mm -hmm. you mentioned the word suicide, yeah. and uh, Lynn, Lynn Byers, he was a up-and-coming star athlete, yep. NBA, and he was uh, under the influence of cocaine, mm -hmm. and uh, he was went out there to play basketball, and he had a heart attack. Nah, nah. So I only bring that up just to let people know that you know, by drinking and using drugs, yeah. you know, other factors, you're doing a lot of damage, not only to your mind, but yeah. also to your heart, liver, and all that stuff. So, uh, also, speaking about all the body parts, the brain and everything, uh, it's important to get physicals. That's why I always tell people, you should get a physical. Oh, I don't feel sick. Get a physical. Because um, there's so many things that, like, before I, I was out of work, but before I went back to work, I kept telling my doctor, yo, I feel good, I feel good, let me go back to work, I'm good. She said, no, you feel good, but internally it says your numbers are off. So I'm like, even though I physically feel better, she said something that you can't see. So I'm, that's why I tell people, especially when you're putting all this alcohol and drugs in your body, you need to get a physical to get checked and see what you may have damaged. Mm -hmm. if, if you damage anything, still you should want to know. continues to say, many of us grow up using alcohol to mark special occasions. It is hard to learn how to celebrate those times without drinking. I remember, last, I think it was last week, Karen, you and I we was reading an article and they were saying, for those who are in recovery, if you feel that, you know, you can't have a good time because you're uh, in sobriety, Create your own uh, sobriety club. Yeah. <laughs> and when I read that, I was like, whoa. I never would have thought that somebody would, you know, create a... Their own. Yeah, create your own. Have guys, you know, you can laugh and joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, even, you know, us at the job, we yeah. sit around and laugh and joke. And we create our own. 
and we we're not even under no influence. Of, uh, and you can I mean, have fun, and we have a great time, you know. Special Mark, among many of us grow up using alcohol to mark special occasions. Those special occasions going to come around again, mm -hmm. and you might have an idea of. We, some people usually say, "Oh, we had a good old time. We were pissy drunk and everything." That was not a good old time, mm -hmm. but but you got to think. Remember, we were talking about irrational thinking. The irrational thinking. Your thinking is cloudy. So when you have these special occasions that come up, everybody around you don't necessarily have to be doing some type of substance. Um, my wife and I was talking about, um, uh, she made a statement. She said, I really don't get it. Uh, I said, what? She said, well, you know, we, we didn't have a particular person in mind. She was generally saying it. And she said, you ever see how people drink or whatever they do all week, and then when their birthday come, they say they're turning up? She said, I don't understand. You was already doing that already. So what's you doing? <laughs> so, so I don't get it. If you already was doing, you do it every day. You, you and then you, your birthday, you want to do that's some. So how about turning down, like not doing it that day? Mm -hmm. So you got to think. Special occasions is going to change when you're coming off of being addicted to alcohol, any drugs. Special occasions don't always mean you have to have something to um, get you drunk or high. Yes, and so if you guys go on, I don't know if we post our uh, holiday prevention, relapse prevention during the holidays. Right. Uh, we talked about it all during the holiday uh, season, prior to Thanksgiving, Christmas, Christmas New, New Year. New Year. So you can go to our YouTube page, Capital Recovery Center YouTube page, and watch all our previous recorded videos about holiday relapse during the holidays and all that. There's plenty of content on there for you to help you to um, listen to it. Just let it play and listen to what we had to say. Yeah. So, we're going to keep moving on because, listen, we're here at Capital Recovery Center. My name is Craig. I'm one of the recovery center coaches here. And uh, what we do here, we offer a lot of services. Mm hmm we, we host a service that we can help those, like Mike stated earlier, with detox, Residential treatment, IOP, even sober living housing for those who That's may right. be struggling with housing assistance. Yeah. So feel free to reach out to us, IDs, if we can help you with that. Once again, we're not allowing people in the building, uh, not no walk-ins, only by apart, uh, appointment. Are you know, there anything now missing, guys, that we are? We can help with um, any assistance with gas, electric. Any assistance like that, if you need transportation to a, a treatment facility, we can help you um, guys with that also. MAT funding. Oh, come on. Come on, can I give it to us? We got help if you need uh, help with MAT funding, if you're on the MAT program, um, and you need help with uh, catching up on some of the bills of MAT. It's sim simple things that we require to you to provide for us before we do it. But um, we have a host of things. Um, you can um, contact us again. And we have so many things available to people in our community. Just utilize it. I really don't like well, to have things that are available to individuals in our community and we not utilize it and say we don't have anything here. And anybody struggling with any type of substance use disorder and needs some type of assistance, the Capital Recovery Center has plenty of things that we can help you with. We just need to know how can we help you with your recovery to that. Yeah. <laughs> nice plug. <Yeah. laughs> All right. So where are we? Uh, number seven. Number seven. In many families and social groups, drinking is a sign of strength, of being with it, or being sophisticated. Our culture encourages drinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our coaches do. That's why you see, um, they even carry drinking for the, to the ground when people die. Let's pour out some for the Or you forced on. Oh, you feel Oh, uh, my man ain't here. My man ain't here. But you know, that, that, that's because our culture, our culture celebrates that. And a lot of times that, just think, if you are a person that, that struggles with alcohol and you're around people and they, everybody celebrates that. Some cultures do it um, in, the, in, the, in their state culture is a good sense. Like, we have to drink during this occasion. Like, you don't drink. You have to drink. All of us do that. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful about that, too, and stay away from those situations. Yeah. 
even though alcohol is uh, considered legal, mm. and some people are sociable drinking, but when it's, it comes where you cannot be sociable or functional, then there may be uh, a problem that needs to be uh, rectified or addressed at some level. And so that we are encouraging, like we all come from different cultures. And so Karen, she comes from a, a different culture, I believe, right? Yes. Sir. And so maybe you want to share a little bit about maybe, I'm not sure, <laughs> if there's a difference. Well, it's, um, my culture is Mexican culture. And drinking is most definitely a huge thing. Um, it's very unlikely for it to be seen as a problem, mm -hmm. especially for men. It kind of gives them a sense of authority, um, just like what it said in the, in the statement. So I think that's why alcohol, I think in my culture, is a big, big issue. Yeah. Um, and like I said, a lot of people, because it's, so it's so normalized very little people seek help because it's like it, I don't have a problem everybody else drinks so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. And, yeah even in the uh, African American community or culture you know uh, summertime's coming around oh we have oh, a barbecue yeah. you know when the barbecue you know everybody gotta have, have a beer gotta have a brown bag gotta have a beer yeah. and so uh, we want to you know, try to encourage you to have just, fun. Have fun, but sometimes you can break out of those traditions where alcohol don't always have to be included. And you can be the one to set the new trend. That's right. Like for instance, we um at my house, um, we don't have. Uh, uh, it's it's funny because we were selling something, and uh, an item, a couch. We were selling furniture, and uh, on the description, me and my wife was laughing because I'm like, yo, make sure you put non-smoking house, no pet. And I said, yeah, that, that is important. But because you have to set the atmosphere in your particular house. So if you go somewhere and everybody else has to have that, you can be the one that set the new, this is the new way we're going to do it. When y'all come over here, instead of uh, uh, bring your own beer, you know, <laughs> come over here, you know, don't bring it. Like, you know what I mean? Right. This, is, this is the new trend. Mm -hmm. Don't bring your own beer. Like, you know what I mean? You have to set that own atmosphere. Absolutely. And so, um, let's talk a little about knock and talk. I missed, made mention about knock and oh, talk. Oh, yeah. And so one, that's one of the things that we do here at Cumberland County. Uh, we assist those who have been Narcan from a previous overdose. And so we are out in the community uh, reaching out to those who uh, may need assistance. So we offer our cares. And so we have a Cumberland Cares hotline. Oh, yeah. 1-800-236-2448. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you see us in the community, uh, Phil, just know that we are coming in uh, a humble uh, position to offer services. And so we're not here to hurt or harm no one. And so we thank all those who assist us, Cumberland County Human Services. Sheriff's Department. The Sheriff's Department. Prosecution. The Prosecutor Office of Cumberland County. It's all a collaborative effort. Right, and those surrounding areas, you know, the EMTs and all of those as well. And so we encourage you guys to reach out to us because we're doing some great things here in, in Cumberland County. Yeah, because we want to, um, you have to have the passion to do it. That's right. uh, you know, you got to have the passion. It ain't about the money. Sometimes you might get paid one day and don't get the rest. But this, <laughs> you, this, is, this, this is about having a heart and love. <laughs> For the people, trust me, you gotta add a heart for it. We really love the job that we do. Uh, I can never forget. I'm sorry, I can't give the person the credit for the quote. It says, "Once you find something you love, you never work a day in your life." We here at Calvary Recovery Center, recovery coaches, and everybody affiliated with us are part of us. We love what we do because we love to make um, see other people smile and see other people's lives change. So our last one. Our last one, it says, the habit of drinking gets to be part of certain activities. It seems difficult at first to eat certain foods, go to sporting, sporting events, or relax without a beer or other drink. Mm. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I admit, I was, <laughs> I was one of them. You know, I couldn't, 
go to a, a party. It is. You know, I couldn't go to a, a, a basketball game or a football game unless I I thought I needed uh, to have something in my system to feel at ease or at calm or to be with the in crowd. You know, I I, I noticed the popularity contest. Yeah. You know, a lot of us want to be with the, the in crowd. You know. Just like on Facebook, you know, people go and uh, I guess they go off of how many likes you got and, <laughs> and, and how many likes you didn't get, you know, so they want to be with the popularity or the in crowd. And so they may, you see the poster where people are doing all types of things or drinking or uh, whatever, but we encourage you to not that you can have a good time without it. Without it. And also in this, what she just read, the part right here said, it seems difficult at first. That means it's going to be difficult at first not to have those substances and still enjoy those events. It's going to feel difficult at first. So when you're first trying to walk in your sobriety or your recovery life, new lifestyle, and you go into these events that you previously used to only go to when you had the alcohol or the drugs, it's going to feel difficult at first. Mm -hmm. Don't panic when it seems like a little weird to you. I'm telling you now, after having 12 years removed, it's going, it was difficult at first to think, you know, man, I, during this time, I usually be doing this. It's Super Bowl time. I know I'm gonna get high then. But you gotta remember, it's going to be difficult at first, it won't be difficult going forward. Just make sure you don't go back. Mm -hmm. And if you do relapse, just remember that, you know, don't take that as a failure. Just take that, you know, you, you made a mistake or, you know, you relapsed. And, but pick yourself back up. And we're here to encourage you to pick yourself back up. Don't, don't allow, you know, a, a mistake or a relapse because that's all a part of our recovery because people do relapse in recovery. And, and so, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mike. And also, uh, I was doing a training or webinar training um last week and it was dealing with relapse actually. And they were saying, um, when you relapse or when the person relapse slip or whatever title you would like to name it, when you do it, change your relapse prevention plan because something's flawed in it. Mm -hmm. It says when as soon as you find yourself if you find yourself relapsed Whatever plan you had to, to prevent you from relapsing, if you relapse, then something in your plan needs to be changed. It's, it's, it's something in It might not be the whole thing. It's something in your plan or your coping skills uh, treatment uh, plan you have has to be changed. Something got to be changed. So if, it, if you went back to it, then something in, in there is wrong. So look for what's wrong. And so this, I don't, you know, want to leave this out of this on my mind. The we, we learned something called the five stages of change. Mm -hmm. And that is pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. Yeah. And so if you do relapse, you know, you don't always have to go back to the pre-contemplation stage. Yeah, you can just go back to maintenance or action or preparation. Yeah, you can fluctuate through those stages over and over again. And a lot of people do. Absolutely. So we're going to read, uh, let's read the these two. The final statement says, it is important to remember that everyone who stops drinking has these problems at first. As you work through the difficult situations and spend more time sober, it does get easier. Told you. If you keep going, it gets easier. It might be difficult at first. Trust me, it will be difficult mm -hmm. at first. Mm -hmm. But as you keep going, it will get easier. So we'd like to thank y'all for tuning in for another All Recoveries meeting. Um, my name is Michael. I'm one of the recovery coaches here at Capital Recovery Center. And uh, you can call us because we have appointment only, 856-391-7449. Mm -hmm. And so in closing, I would like to thank you all for coming today or listening or tuning in. We close an all recovery meeting with a positive affirmation about ourselves, followed by a moment of silence to remember why we are here. Anyone would like to give a positive affirmation? Uh, keep going. My positive affirmation for you, no matter what situation you might come up against, 
keep going forward. You might find yourself made uh, into a relapse. Don't stop, get up, keep going forward. You might find yourself in um, lost a job and you can't get the job back due to your substance use disorder. That's all right, keep going. You might have relationship issues and you can't get the relationship restored that you destroyed due to your substance use of disorder. I understand that too, just keep going. My positive affirmation is seek help. There are many resources out there, use them. Mm. My positive affirmation to all those out there is to encourage not only others, but encourage yourself. Be a blessing to others as you've also been blessed in your recovery process. And so with that, we'd like to take a moment of silence. Thank you, everyone. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Capital Recovery Center.